What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do basic facial recognition using the OpenCV module and Python code. So the basics of what we're gonna to need today uh, is the OpenCV module, which is uh, basically computer vision. It's a lot of Python stuff. We've done it before on the channel for some basic like uh, image transformations to make it like black and white or blurry, but it also can do really advanced uh, facial recognition with just a few lines of code. And there is a pretty important piece that we'll touch on when we get to it. That's basically your cascader, which is essentially the um, XML code that's going to actually check for the faces for you. We'll talk about that more as we get into it. But so let's just start. You need to import the CV2 module and if you don't have it installed already, you'll need to run pip install and the command for this is actually opencv-python. It's not just pip install CV2. Um, so just keep that in mind if you don't have it installed already. And now what we wanna do first is get uh, user values. So we wanna get two things. We wanna get the image path, which for me, I just have a photo that I called beatles.jpg like that. Um, and so whatever image you're using, you just wanna direct it to that. I always leave a copy of my photo in the project folder cause I don't have to do a whole bunch of advanced pathing, but you could here. Um, and then the second thing, this is uh, kind of the black box of the project is you have to give it this cascade path so it knows where to look. And my cascade is in, uh, is in the project f folder and it's called har cascade frontal face default. Har cascade frontal face frontal face default and uh, dot XML. And that is that is kind of just the me waving my hand saying, just accept that that's what it is for now. Because um, a cascade, it seems really complex. The XML file is 33 plus thousand lines of code. So it seems super complicated, but cascade essentially means a series of small waterfalls. That's kind of what the English word means. And that's the right way to think about this code. It goes through your file and it makes a number of small decisions. And based on what it sees there, it goes and it makes a different decision. So I'm not gonna use this video to talk about how to set up a cascade. There are great ones already put together. I believe this particular one comes from Intel. Uh, if you want to grab this cascade file, I will leave a link to the GitHub uh, repository for it in the description of this video so you can grab it from there. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to create the har cascade. So um, we need to actually tell our file, to, uh, our program to use that. So we give it a face cascade and it's equal to cv2 dot cascade classifier. So that is something built into the CV2 uh, function that it knows how to use a cascade file. Um, and then we're just going to path, pass in the cascade path to use it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is read the image. And so the image is equal to cv2.imread and then image path. And the next step, strictly speaking, is uh, it, an optional step, but this is much more accurate if you put the image in grayscale before reading the, uh, the faces. So you're gonna use the cv2.convertColor or cvtColor function, and it's just gonna be pointed at your image, and then use cv2. Dot, and this is going to be color underscore bgr2 gray. So uh, it's, just essentially saying go from color to grayscale. And we're gonna do that right before we detect the faces in the image, te image, in the image. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a list of faces. So we're gonna say faces equals our face cascade that we already set up and then dot detect multiscale, just like this. And then we need to give it a few arguments. First is gonna be just, uh, let's identify that it's gonna be grayscale. And now the next three are actually things you'll probably wanna play around with in your program. 
but uh, I'll talk briefly about them as we put them in. Scale factor uh, is going to kind of determine what uh, size the faces are going to look at. Um, and so this can kind of impact, uh, based on the overall size of your image, what size faces should we be looking for? And really good values are sort of between 1.05 and 1.3, 1.4. And we'll play around with this a little bit once we get the code written. Um, but really the way to get that dialed in is just sort of guess and check, which sort of brings us to min neighbors as well. Um, you can find all of the documentation on this uh, like OpenCV2 face cascade online if you're super curious about what this is. But this is essentially like how many of the signals that indicate it's a face do we need to look for to indicate that it is a face. So lowering this a little bit might increase the sensitivity of your face detection, but it also might give you some things that aren't faces. Um, so it just kind of, you, to tweak those is kind of, do you want to catch everything, but also catch some garbage, or do you want to miss out on maybe some smaller, harder to detect faces? And then min size is going to say like, below a certain size, don't look for that at all. We're not going to register that as a face. And there is an opposite one that's max size. We're not going to use that right now. Um, but you could say above a certain size, that's not face. Under a certain size, that's not face. And that would kind of let you only look for faces at a certain depth from you. But so for now, let's just do that. And then let's create a printed, oops, sorry about that. Um, let's create a formatted print statement that's going to uh, tell us how many faces they found. So we'll say found, and then uh, we'll just throw a zero in here, but we're gonna use the dot format command. So found curly brackets, uh, zero faces, and then we'll say dot format, and then we just tell them what we want to stick into our formatted option in that string. And uh, that'll be length of faces. And this is the exact same thing as putting an F here and saying instead of zero, length of faces. So that's really just up to the programmer, I guess this is sort of my standard. I do it that way more often. Um, but so now what we want to do is we want to draw a rectangle, rectangle around the faces. And what we'll do is we'll say for X and Y starting coordinates and then width and height in faces. So those are every face is defined by an x and y starting coordinate and then how wide it is and how tall it is. If you've seen some of my pi game tutorials, it's the same concept. You need these four things to fully define a rectangle, uh, your x and y starting coordinate and then your width and your height. And so for each of those in faces, we'll do cv2.rectangle um, on top of our image and then it needs our x and y coordinates we'll give it x and y and then it needs to know uh, its stopping point and so that'll be x plus width and y plus height because the uh, kind of standard for computer graphics is zero zero is in the top left so uh, you can think of it as your y starting coordinate plus height is actually going down the screen okay and so then uh, what color we want to be, I'm just gonna make them green rectangles because they really pop against most images. Like this bright green is really not a very natural color, so it should show up pretty well. And then just give it a width of two so it's easier to see. And then we're gonna run this cv2.imshow, which actually displays the rectangles. Uh, it'll pop the image up with the rectangles over it. And so we'll call this faces found and we'll put it on top of the image. And then we will just do the CV2 dot wait key zero, which is just going to make sure it stays up on the screen. It doesn't close as soon as we run it. Okay, so here's the Beatles photo. Uh, you probably saw it in the intro that I want to use. They're all just looking a little confused. This I think is just in the Sergeant Peppers era. Um, but so if we run this with kind of these default values that I put in here, you can see it's pretty good, but we actually got, for some reason, it detects George's chin and uh, neck as a face. So maybe what we need to do is we need to step this scale factor up to 1.3. Maybe that'll help reduce the sensitivity. And now you can see when we run it, um, it, it does find the four faces, which is great. Um, and you can also see down here in the console window, it says found four faces. So that's great. It's telling us how many faces we have. 
Um, but so let's do this with a trickier photo, right? Uh, let's do it with the Sgt. Pepper's cover because this is obviously a little bit more lower def. Uh, it's not really a big photo like that. Uh, every face in it is quite a bit smaller. And so what you'll see if I run this and I change this from Beatles to Beatles 2, now you're gonna see it should detect a ton of faces. It only detects six, okay? So it's not sensitive enough right now. Um, so what we can do is we can reduce this scale factor to like we can try 1.1 and now it's going to find 17 faces. So it's doing a little bit better. Um, we can bring this all the way down to like 1.05 and uh, that should get pretty good. And you can see it picks up 32 faces. It actually even picks up the face of the statue. Uh, it's getting each of our beetles now. So it's getting closer, but you can tell like it's a low def photo. Um, it, it's actually picking up on sort of weird faces and it's forgetting some that should be like sort of obvious. Um, but so then you can take a look at like reducing your minimum neighbors requirement to like three and now we get 42 faces and you can see it's not great when you reduce uh, some of those parameters. Uh, we are getting a ton of faces fairly accurately, but we also got like a knee and this guy's chest and it's not even picking up this guy's face. Um, so like there are a lot of things to consider here. You could reduce your minimum size because they're obviously pretty small faces and now it registers it's picking up 46. So. Um, these really are the key parameters you're going to want to play with. If uh, this basic facial recognition uh, doesn't get you close enough to your end goal, you might want to go online and look up the CV2 face cascade uh, multi-scale parameters and sort of do some reading on additional things that you can do. Um, Again, I will leave this code uh, in a GitHub link with the two images that I used, as well as the full XML file. The XML file is uh, pretty beefy. It's gonna take a little while to load on your computer and download because it's 33,000 lines of code. Um, but I hope you found this useful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions on what you saw here today or wanna see anything specific in the future or like a project built off the back of this to see potential applications. Um, I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, good luck with your projects, bye.